Coming up on All About Android, Ann Pruitt, new twit here at the studio, joins us. We're going to talk about the upcoming Made by Google event. We're going to talk about the upcoming OnePlus event. We're going to talk about the upcoming Huawei event. So many events. Also, the Pixel 4 Google camera leaked, and we've got some before and after photos of the astrophotography stuff. Fairphone 3 teardown, your email, and a whole lot more coming up next on All About Android. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by PayPal Credit. If you're purchasing new tech devices or booking upcoming travel, use PayPal Credit and enjoy six months special financing on purchases of $99 or more. Learn more and apply now at paypal.com slash twit. Subject to credit approval, minimum monthly payments required. And by LegalZoom, save 10% for a limited time on the things you've been meaning to do with LegalZoom. Just go to LegalZoom.com and enter AAA at checkout. And by IT Pro TV. IT Pro TV provides IT training that's effective and entertaining with access to virtual labs and practice tests. Visit go.itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active subscription. And use code AAA30 at checkout. Hello and welcome to All About Android, episode 438, recorded on Tuesday, September 17th, 2019, your weekly source for latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I am Jason Howell. And I am Ron Richards. And I am LaFlo. 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 That's a new one. Haven't Yeah, haven't heard that one before. Welcome to the three of you and the four of you because okay. Ant Pruitt is here. O-M-G, dude. <laughs> and he is amazed to be here. How are you doing? And you look uh, so good in HD, by the way. Oh, like, I, oh, it, yeah. it really I've been told you. that before, but thank you. <laughs> we, we, he, you know, at this point, he's used to hearing do, that. Yeah, we have to acknowledge that Mr. Pruitt has leveled up since we last saw him on the show, huh? Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, last time yeah. I was here, I was sitting right over there. Well, that's right. You were in the audience. You know, watching live. (laughs) You had just started. Yes. But before that, let's see here. Last time you were on was July 24th, 2018. You worked worked for a company. You were writing for this company called Tech Republic. Yep. That that sounds about about right. That sounds about right. That was a year ago? That feels like literally, I was going to be like, that was earlier this year, right? Oh, my God. This, (laughs) This show is a time machine, basically. Clearly. It really is. It really is. Yeah. So a year ago, you were on the show, and you had no idea that a year from then you'd be working with us. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that coming. Wow. But I'm not mad at all. No, the not world works all. mysterious ways, and we <laughs> love having you here. Yeah. I'm so stoked that we can get you on in studio on the show Definitely. every single week, right? Um, right? That would yeah. be um, maybe. <laughs> You've got a lot going on, so it's okay. Every other week, we'll settle for that. Uh, it's good to have you here. Glad to be here. We've got some uh, great news going on this week. Before we get there, remember, if you haven't already, subscribe, twit.tv slash AAA. But you know to do that. You know what podcasts are all about. I'll go ahead and apologize in advance. I have no voice right now, so uh, I'm going to do my very best to keep it in check throughout the what course of the show. What were you doing? What team were you cheering on, Jason? <clears throat> uh, team Howell. I was cheering on Team Howell all weekend. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I did, did a lot they, of talking win? this weekend, obviously, and a little bit of yelling. Did, did you they sound win? about as good as a frog <laughs> yes. with laryngitis, man. Team, team Howell won. Let's just <laughs> say that. Uh, yeah, well, a frog with laryngitis? <laughs> Thank you. At least I'm not doing the show yesterday. Yesterday was <laughs> ugly. Uh, no. Anyways, it's time for the news, Victor. Let's do it. After striking first, striking hard with no mercy... Uh, Sorry, after Apple struck hard, struck first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> wow, no, man. you can't do I that. I gotta do it. That was, yeah, that I was really one of Victor's up. most epic fails. Victor, do it again. Right yeah, it was, uh, I, I endorse. I endorse. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> I don't know. I, sometimes I think the failures are the drop. Oh, they <laughs> are. It is. They are. I think that has to be it, Victor. Sorry, I had a, I had a good one. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want another take? Yeah, Can sure. Okay, okay, it's up let to me you. Do another right, take. Go for it. Go All right. for yourself. Redeem yourself. After Apple struck first, struck hard with no mercy, this uh, this slew of 
rumors from Pixel is the training montage. <laughs> I was watching a lot of Cobra Kai over the weekend. <laughs> you, listen, oh. listen. I, I acknowledge the greatness that is Cobra Kai. You had it in the first line. Oh, you got I know. I, I need you more training. You got, you got thrown out of third base, man. Like yeah. you just you couldn't make it. Oh. It's okay, Victor. Yeah, I need I needed more training. <laughs> I can tell why you got flustered because you're so excited that the news has broken that the uh, Pixel 4 announcement is set. The date is set for October 15th at Made by Google 2019. So it's uh, shockingly on a Tuesday. What? So we will be able to talk about it after it happens. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, it's it's going to be uh, occurring uh, in New York City at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 a.m. Pacific Time. Um, before we get in, we expect to see. Uh, I want to let everyone know that the last year's event was in New York City. I was in the audience, if you remember. It was a great time. I do remember I, that. I was. I will not be there this year. What? Oh. Not, not because but because I'm actually going to be in California on business. So uh, I am subject to the scheduling snafu of the fact that I'm going to be in Los Angeles on this day. So I couldn't even go. But oh, man. we may have a little surprise waiting in the wings. Who else at the table is planning on going? Who would that be? Who who could it be now? Jason? No, I'm not going. I'm here. And you're here, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll be here bright and early. Uh, I, I don't think any of us are going. So, oh wait a minute, Flo, no, Flo, you're going. I'm Amazing. Going go. Wait a minute, but you live in California, so how does that work? Yes, but there's this wonderful thing called airplanes. Oh yeah, Thank I've heard you. of those. Oh, Amelia okay. Earhart. Uh, <laughs> so I will get one on one and go to New York City. Uh, and see these things in person that have already basically been announced. Yeah, True. basically. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that, but in, about in classic it. all about. It. Classic all about Android fashion. Flo will be landing in New York City as I am taking off. And <laughs> I know. And what would, have, I know. what would have been a great moment for us to go to the event together and then do the show together and stuff like that is all ruined uh, because of my life. They so sound like they have the perfect sibling relationship. Yeah, totally. It's like, oh, you're coming to town? Yeah, I'm leaving. Sorry. See you later. See, the funny thing is Flo... Flo Flo and I can't be in the same room together anymore, so this is really part of the deal. One has to be in California, one has to be in New York at all times. So yeah, that's the. Yeah. If you guys but, are together yeah. in the same room, does a wormhole open or something? I think that's what? probably yes. what happens. Actually, <laughs> that's probably the exactly the Taurus, it. Taurus it's not wormhole. good. <laughs> It's not good. But anyway, so what will Flo expect to see at that event? Uh, so the teaser copy on the website that announced it alludes to a new Pixel phone, which we assume is the Pixel 4 that we've already seen, um, as well as uh, 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 connected home devices. Uh, and speculation there is that it'll be a new Nest Mini. Um, and of course, you know, to continue the parade of seeing the phone already before the event, um, to celebrate, uh, a bunch of YouTubers have revealed high quality hands-on demonstrations of the Pixel 4 phones and features. Um, <laughs> and uh, so like, I like that they're embracing it, which means that the stakes are just that much higher for this event for them to surprise us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, one of those surprises might be the small possibility that there's a third Pixel, uh, a, th a third Pixel 4 will be announced, the Pixel 4a, um, also known as Needlefish in code repositories for you nosy people. Uh, but the uh, question is, would that be a rapid update to the 3a, um, which is likely, but uh, the 3a was reportedly supposed to launch with the Pixel 3 last year, according to sources. So this could be Google adjusting the timing with the Pixel 4a to get it back where you've got the flagship phone and you've got the smaller version of the flagship phone and then you've got the affordable mid-range mm -hmm. phone. Um, whether or not it's a 3a gussied up with the new 4 number on it to keep the numbering or if it's a new phone will remain to be seen. Flo, what do you wish will be at the event aside from the Pixel 4 and uh, Nest Mini? What do I wish will be aside from the Pixel 4 and the Nest Mini? Uh, are we are we transitioning or <laughs> are we segueing? <laughs> well, just like, like so, it's just the Pixel 4 and just the connected home device. I don't know. Will that be enough to make that flight worth your worth your trip? So. No, you know what else would really make that trip worth it for me? What to cross the coast? What? Uh, why not a Nest Wi-Fi? device. Oh, that, that's a good you know, that's something, something to replace the Google Wi-Fi that has served its purpose for so many years now in my home to expand the internet capabilities throughout my lovely abode. 
<laughs> right. Now, okay. <laughs> now, would would you like? Are you thirsting for a Google uh, Wi-Fi update at this point? Do you have a Google Wi-Fi in your home right now? I do. So actually, so actually, let's let me let me break it down before we get into right, that. Break it down so. For me. Yeah, nine to five Google has said that a new Nest Wi-Fi is likely to be announced at this event. Um, so this would be a single hub and a smaller plugin, and include smaller plugin beacons that double as assistant speakers. We kind of have been seeing Google do this with some of its other devices, like the Nest Guard, for instance, uh, the little hockey puck that comes with the keys on it. It also like had a speaker built into it, kind of thing. Um, you know. I'm fine with my Google Wi-Fi, so I'm kind of like, I feel like this would just be the updated branding. I feel like they would not uh, cancel the the millions of Google Wi-Fis that I'm sure people have installed in their homes already. No, and, I, and in fact, I think, I, from what I understand, I think the plan would be that the new ones would interoperate with the older ones, so you could add the newer ones to your already established Google that Wi-Fi mesh nice. network. That would be nice. More yeah. coverage. Yeah, more coverage. And I, I love mm -hmm. the idea of embedding an assistant speaker into these things. That makes a whole lot of sense if you're already plugging these things into a power brick right. and it's already connecting to the internet. Google and wants it, its it opens everywhere. that ecosystem more. Yep. It, it it makes it much bigger. Uh, not to mention the ability to just like go out and buy a little smaller plug-in and just like plug it in into maybe like a dead zone in your house. I mean, that's... Hopefully they send us stickers though, so we can just kind of like put Nest stickers or whatever they're going. So I thought they were killing Nest and going to Google, but no, it's calling it Nest. Okay, something like that. It's they're, still they're leaning. They're it. leaning into Nest hard. Yeah, uh, they're yeah. leaning into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's actually not the only device that we'll probably see pop up at this event. This is going to be like a big Google extravaganza. So whereas Google I.O. is where we go kind of find out all the developer -y stuff and like what's happening in the right. back end and inside this. This is the hardware equivalent where we got like the big bonanza. So nine to five Google also thinks it's possible. New pixel books were, will appear at the event, which sounds like it's about time because yes. what I think it's been about two years since the last Pixel book. book came out definitely since the last Pixel book last year. Instead of the yeah. Pixel book, they had the Pixel. Slate. I don't think about the slate very much. <laughs> yeah, you've you've written that Sorry. one off. It's okay. Sorry. I still have it in my office. I look at it every once in a while. It's sitting it's over there, for staring, Netflix, at least. frowning. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever want to use it, Ant, just let me know. Yeah, you can just watch TV on it. Uh, would... So this this has been codenamed Atlas, which is, uh, uh, frankly, I think a very cool name. Uh -huh. And it's been popping up for more than a year now. And there are new photos showing the upcoming device in use for the first time. Atlas has passed through the FCC. It passed back in July. And photos show a black device body and thin bezels. Uh, but, you know, with the way Chromebooks are, if you have a Pixelbook, I'm sure the one that you have is just fine because Google's pretty good about supporting these Chromebooks uh, for a while. So yeah. this is, you know, this is good. It's this is going to be a nice, big hardware event with just, you know, maybe one more thing. Oh, one more right, thing. Ooh, it's, it's possible. Just, yeah. just give me something that's got a beautiful screen resolution and something that will run. I don't know. 40 tabs without crashing and crying at me. Um, That's it? Just 40? <laughs> yeah, it seems... That I seems think I'm sorry. Higher, paltry. I think, no, I, think you, I think you can go up to at least 80. 80 oh, tabs? God, that's my nightmare. Oh, my gosh. No, no. I, I, I don't need that much. But these <laughs> Pixel books, they've had a good reputation of being, you know, like a workhorse, if you will, for, yeah. the, for the Chromebook user. And I've always enjoyed using Chromebook when I was doing my writing stuff. But... Nowadays, it seems like a lot of them were, were a little bit of a dud, overpriced duds. And well, the Slate was just a strange one to hit last year, and I don't know what Google thought was going to happen <laughs> with that. Clearly, it didn't go to plan because they've scrapped their tablet, you know, their whole tablet plan around the failure of the slate. I mean, I'm still using the Pixelbook here. This is my second year on it, and I have not encountered. I've encountered zero moments where I go, "Man, I really need to upgrade this thing." All right. If they come out with a new one, of course I'll get it because we'll review it on the network, and I always want to be on the latest, you know, to to be in touch with that. Of course, but. I, this device is great. It like, is. It, it, it's rock solid. I've not seen you complain about it one time on air. 
No, <laughs> never. And I never will. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, usually with computers, eventually you start getting that weird little slow. Right. Things slow down. Ch -ch 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 it's chunky to get over there. Things just, you know, you start to see little stutters and everything. And not once, but maybe I'm not pushing it hard enough. But, the, I mean, it's it's Chrome OS. Well, so. and, that's, and that's another thing. And the credit to Chrome OS with its relentless update cycle that it has yes and, you know it's always up always up every time i turn on my my chromebook my old toshiba 2 chromebook to i believe that's what it was called it's constantly updated and it still runs like a champ yeah i love that thing for writing i love it for just sitting in the corner and, and watching netflix or what have you if i'm traveling and i need to write that's what goes with me because yeah. it's, it's perfect for that it's lightweight, lightweight and it's quick yep it does. And that's old Exactly what you need, you and know, so now if no you're going to give me a, a new Pixel Book with higher screen resolution, where I could still run some Android apps like Lightroom, um, Android on there, and, and edit some photos. Yeah, count me in. Yep, count me in too. Um, let's go back real quick before we move on to something from the story that you set, or the part of it that you set up, Ron, with these videos that dropped, <laughs> these oh, high res. 4K I just, videos. I, in, in disgust, I, I skip past the leaks because I'm just so in, uh, slightly annoyed that the mystery is gone. <laughs> you and me both, brother. I mean, this happened last year. It was Ukraine. It was, I believe, it was Ukrainian bloggers. Um, I, if I remember correctly, Flo, you thought it was a setup, like it was a Google setup, right? Is that right? That was your uh, initial I thought. I don't remember what I thought. I think I just, I just felt like you know, what, we'll just wait and see, guys. Like nothing is confirmed until it comes out of the mouth of babes. And I mean, here we are again. Here, here are some babes uh, with mouths uh, that are talking about the Pixel Four. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was trying to take that analogy, and it went horribly wrong. Yeah, Anyways, uh, and I think this time, it, I think we've seen the source being, uh, you know, a, a Vietnam. We've seen Thai uh, yep. videos. So there's, man, there's something wrong with their supply chain here. Like last year and this yeah. year. These I, things I didn't are falling think, off the truck somewhere. I didn't think about the supply supply chain the way uh, Mr. 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 Ron mentioned it before. I purposely <laughs> thought it was marketing from Google. Yeah, you know, just just yeah. go ahead and put it out there. They because they continue to own up to all of these leaks when they happen. Nobody else does. So just just creative marketing two hundred one is how I look at it. Yeah. I mean, it could, I mean, yes, you're right. You, and I think you mentioned that on This Week in Google as well. And yeah. man, I just, I realize this is, this is just what happens with premium phones. Now they get leaked in whatever way they possibly can. So They're I guess it makes sense that they would to shut them it. down. Because if, if this was Apple, mm. Apple would do a lot to try to shut all of this stuff oh, down, right? Also the fact that it's, it's a Google product on YouTube, a Google product. A Google yeah. product. So, 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 so they could, they could easily make these videos disappear without really trying too hard. Exactly. Yeah. They had yeah. the kill switch if they want to use it. I just wonder what if, if Google were listening, if the people that were actually in control of the marketing of this were listening to this, would they be they laughing and pointing at us and being like, those fools have no idea what they're talking about? <laughs> or or would they be just like hands over their mouths like you know, I know exactly what you're saying. Ant is on to us. <laughs> Ant knows. Ant knows things. Yeah. Ant's seen stuff. Okay. This is like it, it reminds me of. Do you remember when that video leaked and the and the and the new Nexus was in the video? Oh yeah. And we're, like, and, and we're like, oh, that's how that's how they're seeding it out. That's how they're letting us know about it. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to think that there was some larger thing, like yeah. marketing scheme at play. And turns out it was just oversight. Yeah. Like sometimes <laughs> the most obvious answer is the right one. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, I guess uh, we'll never, we'll probably never know the answer to that because Google would never own up to it and be like, yeah, yeah exactly. you know, actually we lost control of a few oh. devices in the warehouse and <laughs> God, aren't we stupid? <laughs> you know, like Google's <laughs> never going to do that. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, they're not Apple. They're not going to lose an iPhone in a bar. In a bar. <laughs> of all Look, places. And Apple's yelling at the TV. Look, one time, okay? <laughs> one time that happened. <laughs> We're going to hold that over our head forever. Yeah, it was like yep. a great yep. story. It yeah. made headlines. <laughs> totally, totally. Well, um, is it too soon to talk about Android 11 or Android R or 11R Are you serious? or whatever? In my world. Are you serious? Are we really? In my world, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's okay. too soon. It's too, too soon. soon. Well, it's not too soon for slides to be shown at the International Broadcasting Convention. IBC. Uh, and apparently XDA 
got a hold of the roadmap for Android TV from those slides, and it shows Ooh. that Stadia support is going to come to Android TV with Android 11 R. So that would be, you know, a year from now. Although when you really think about it, we're going to start seeing the betas in a couple of months, right? Because yeah, this is just it's how that works. It's how this works. <laughs> uh, I, I gotta say, I've been I've been surprised because I get to do a little dabbling into video games in my day job, and I'm seeing the Stadia logo being included on like future games, like the 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 whole thing, you know, available on PlayStation, and Xbox, Stadia, Stadia. Like they're they're doing it. Like so, it's it's like it's weird because it's not there yet, but it's there. And honestly, having it come to Android TV and uh, is a no brainer. I think. Yeah. Right. Oh, for yeah. sure. For sure. And I'm yeah. kind of surprised that it isn't there. It wouldn't be there at launch because Android, because um, Stadia is coming to so many other like easier things like to yeah. your Chrome browser. Right. You know what I mean? Pretty easy. What's no. up, Flo? <laughs> you saw my look of concern. Yes, I, mean. I did. I did. <laughs> uh, I, I'm thinking like, so, okay, my Mi Box has just been Crashy McCrasherson. Yeah. Yeah. Which has been whatever it is, what it is. And I'm thinking like, is it going to work on just like our little boxes? I mean, I know that it's streaming, but I'm thinking of all, I mean, I'm thinking about how hard it is just to get like ROMs uh, to sometimes load mm -hmm. on there. And so I'm thinking, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I, it's a really great real question. Time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a really good is. question I, whether it's actually going to work on those, uh, those, the you know, basic Android TV boxes, I guess that we don't know yet. You got to imagine that there'd be some sort of detection of what CPUs in there, what the box can do. Um, I think this yeah. is perfect for for the Nvidia, right? Yes. The Nvidia Shield. Yes. Yeah. Maybe right. not so much. Maybe not so much for the Mi Box, unfortunately, Flo. Well, the um, the roadmap also mentioned a Hero device, and so Ooh. perhaps mm -hmm. that's a Google made Android TV box. Perhaps it is the leaked NVIDIA Shield TV that we've seen, the refresh that's coming at some point. If so, if so, then we're waiting X number of months until that because this would be a roadmap for next year. So that'd be kind of a bummer because people would love to see a refresh uh, sooner than that. But um, yeah, it's, it's hard to know. It's funny because because like I'm on the verge of buying a NVIDIA Shield because just Chromecast is great, but as the, with the babies, like, it, like my wife just wants the remote. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, um, and so I've been on the verge of getting it, but now hearing this, I'm like, ooh, maybe I should wait because I'm gonna wait for Stadia because I have so much time to play games. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I, I gotta remember my main rule is that if you're thinking about buying something, don't wait, just buy it. Whatever's out, yeah, is, yeah, it, it's gonna be fine. And yeah, and then get the next one. Yeah. Well, that's why I bought the Switch <laughs> because you can take it with you and and you know play it in between the times you're going to the next adult thing that you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I hear you though. It's it's not very easy to find time to to play games, especially it, when you've it's got just twins. It's not very easy in this day and age to this find time. Age. When you got little babies, it's even more difficult. It's tough. The, the 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 idea of a new shield does excite me for Android TV versus you know something being integrated into the displays already. I I just don't like the whole yeah. And whether it's Samsung or LG or whatever to have their own version of. Android TV. I've never really liked that idea, especially if something goes wrong. Well, and how long and is it going to be updated? <laughs> you know, is it going to continue continuously be updated for years and years and years, or will right. it cap off at a certain point and then you're out of cycle with any progression? Everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I like know. The, if it's just a set top box. I like the idea of that. Plus, all of that processing will happen on that set top box. And yeah, the processing that happens inside of smart TVs is not not good. good. Not, not that great. Good, not, no. great. not good, Bob. Not good, Bob. Because <laughs> guess what? Because guess what? It's a TV. Right. Yes. <laughs> not a computer. Yeah. Right. Totally. They tacked yeah. that on at the very end. All yeah. right, Ron, you got uh, the last one. All right. Well, all this Google talk. Let's talk about another company. All okay. right. Let's let's talk about Samsung. Um, friend of the show, Evan Blass, also known more famously as EvLeaks, Leaks. Uh, says that Samsung might be looking to com to combine the Galaxy S and Note lineup into a single family of phones. Shocking. Um, this could happen <laughs> as early as early as next year, and this could mean that one flagship lineup introduced in the first half of the year, not two. 
Um, and really, at this point, the S Pen is the only uh, is one of the only few differentiators between the, the two families of phones. Um, and if the Galaxy, if the Samsung Galaxy Fold, Samsung Fold, what is it? Is Galaxy Fold? Galaxy Fold, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah if, the, if the Samsung Galaxy Fold is indeed a success, as I'm predicting it will be, um, it could take the Note's uh, kind of place in the weird corner of Samsung uh, and also as their second half of the year reveal. So what, what do you think? Do you think that, uh, Jason, you spent the most time with the Note. Do you think that it's ready for prime time to be full and to merge the two lines into the one, into one? I, th I actually think it makes a lot of sense um, just from the perspective of it's gotten really hard to really differentiate between them. It, it really does feel like the S Pen is the main key dif differentiator. The fact mm -hmm. that they're separated, like sometimes they bring a little bit more to the phone, uh, to the Note than they did the Galaxy. But this year that didn't really happen as much, you know. In the previous I think it years, makes sense. In the previous years, it seems like they used the Note to be more of a productivity device. Yeah. Even though it had all the same innards yeah. for the most part, but mm -hmm. they tried to market it for the slideshows or the artists mm -hmm. or what have you and the, the the galaxy s line or whatever they call it was more consumer based. consumer yeah you know. general consumer but i mean you know the note could be the premium the air quotes premium tier yeah. of the s right. series i mean and i think that's kind of where it is now it's just it's differentiated because they release one at a different time from another and I'm sure there are business reasons why they've done that. But if the Fold suddenly becomes the big deal, Man. they might want to release the Fold on its own so that it doesn't dilute attention. You know, yeah. or it does, you know, di attention isn't diluted from it because the Note also comes out at right. the same time. Or the S10. And, yeah, exactly. You know. Exactly. So I could see that. I could totally see that happening. You think the Fold is going to take off? I'm not as optimistic as Ron. Oh, okay. You, 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 we're in the same boat, my friend. I don't know. Samsung's a strong brand. It it's is. a strong brand, and people are ready for a different way of thinking. I th Personally, I think. I don't know. Sure, they had some problems earlier this year, but Samsung, they, they had phones blow up on planes, and they recovered from And they that. did bounce yeah. back. Oh, You're right. Yeah, they right. bounce back, Can but two grand is a lot. Can we talking about like bad stuff with planes, actually? <laughs> yeah. But okay, yes. Until you, you until you make your plane trip, we you won't say talk think, about it anymore. <laughs> you say think differently. What about what what One Plus? What they're doing? I think that's more of a think differently kind of strategy, as far as giving you flagship material at a much better price point. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a great tease for the hardware section. That oh, is, yeah. oh. and we will <laughs> and we will talk there. all about that. <laughs> Uh, but first, we uh, have to take this word from our sponsor. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by PayPal Credit. Use PayPal Credit for any purchases you want to make, big or small. You might have a trip you want to take, flights, car rentals, hotels, tickets, etc. Or a new computer, sound system, monitor, or phone you've been waiting to buy. Or for the sneakerheads out there, it seems there's always a new shoe that comes out that you just have to have. You can buy what you want today and pay overtime with PayPal Credit. And PayPal Credit offers six months special financing on purchases of $99 or more. Some great things about PayPal Credit. It's a digital reusable credit line built into your account with PayPal. No card needed. It's accepted at millions of online stores where PayPal is accepted. You can use PayPal Credit with your existing account with PayPal and check out as seamless. If you don't have an account with PayPal, you can open one for free. PayPal credit is great for large expenses or when something unexpected comes up. And applying is easy. Just answer a few quick questions and get a credit decision in seconds. Enjoy six months special financing on purchases of $99 or more. Go to paypal.com slash twit to learn more and apply for PayPal credit. Minimum monthly payments required, subject to credit approval. That's paypal.com slash twit. Thank you, PayPal. All right. Uh, we've already been kind of talking a little bit about hardware. This is a hardware-heavy show, but let's uh, get official about it. It's time for Hardware the Bumper. Oh, yeah, it's the bumper. <laughs> oh, isn't that a nice bumper? Nice hardware bumper. Okay. Good bumper. Good bumper. <laughs> Great bumper. Uh, Flo, you got the first one. We you know what bumpers even. are not nice. I don't what? like bumper cars. So, not fun. Oh, bumper cars violent. are fun. 
No, they're not. Yeah, they, they are. They cause back problems. Uh, well, that's oh, true. Yeah. That's true. They <laughs> you, can. You got me. They can. <laughs> they, they can, can. also cause uh, fun. But you know what? I do like. I do like OnePlus because they have brought a phone into this very, very uh, busy world of smartphones that people can afford and get a pretty good deal out of. And now there's a new phone coming that will probably be a good deal. So OnePlus fans, get ready for the OnePlus 7T and 7T Pro, just in time for holiday shopping, especially if your favorite holiday is Halloween. Some of us love it. Uh, the unveiling is, <laughs> I was hoping you guys would like say something, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> Cricket. I like to leave her out I, look, there. Leave, leave yeah, it's, it's like to <laughs> see what happens. No, I'm thinking more Fat Tuesday. Uh, oh, okay. So the official the official unveiling will take place September 26th at 10:30 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, I believe that's 7:30 a.m. Pacific Time. On leaks posted renders of the 7T with a front design similar to that of the 6T, but a three camera array on the back in a circular module. So not in that square version that you've been seeing. And actually, uh, I kind of like this. This pie, yeah. this pie of cameras that's happening here. Yeah. It's delicious. Mm. Uh, OnePlus then posted designs to its forum, kind of, you know, stealing in the deal, bringing in the hype. OnLeak has said uh, the, the phone will have a Snapdragon 855 Plus, a 90 hertz display, 20% faster charging, and it will come out of the box with Android 10. Uh, One, OnLeak's also said that the OnePlus 7T Pro will not have wireless charging, or always on ambient display as some had hoped. Bummer for those. Uh, friend of the show, David Ruddock from Android Police, also has sources who say that Verizon now has a deal with OnePlus, which is pretty exciting. Sweet. And that they could sell the phones on the network in 2020, possibly to support the big 5G rollout. But of course, as we know, if you buy a OnePlus phone now unlocked, um, it works on Verizon, which it didn't previously kind of expanding the ability where it can be used. So it's just, uh, it's, hey, it's that, a good time to be a OnePlus user. That's the real news, if you ask me. I mean, we knew we knew that a phone would be coming, and it's in this time period, and it's time for the T phone. But if Verizon picks up OnePlus, Holy cow. sure, the, phone, the, the unlocked phones could work on, on Verizon, but Flo, putting them in the store and selling them to the millions of people who go to Verizon stores, that's a game changer. Yep. Yes, because you'll have the employees who work there like telling people about it. And, you know, Verizon employees are like Best Buy employees in that they tend to hire folks who are like really into tech. And so you have those people who come in and go, hey, I want to tell you about this like really cool thing that you yeah. probably maybe didn't see a commercial about, uh, which I love. I love that there is that enthusiasm when you go into the store. Uh, and that also means marketing material, which is like a big deal. <laughs> totally. Marketing. Yeah. Who, marketing. Who'd have thunk? Samsung learned that lesson. <laughs> Apple learned that lesson. Oh, yeah. Google's still learning that lesson. Uh, yeah. But... <laughs> Well, OnePlus, man, they've really come a long way yeah. uh, as a as a scrappy little upstart, and I think going into Verizon could be the really big turnaround for them. Yep. I would consider OnePlus more and more over the last yeah. year or two. Um, previously, I never had any interest in them. You know, mm -hmm. I saw that they were less expensive, and everybody talked about just how great it was. You know, dollar for dollar. But I was always just stuck on the Pixel line or the Nexus line. It's just my taste, but. They, they're, they're getting my eyeballs now. You know, yeah. they're, they're, they're putting it out there and, and keeping the price down is the big thing because I still think price, prices are just too high for phones. Today. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Ron Amadio great, at, our, yeah. at Ars Technica, you know, he even posted on, on, on as part of his article, like he considers the OnePlus 7 Pro to be the Android phone of the year from a, from a features standpoint, from a price standpoint, quality, <laughs> Ron, Ron owns endorses. it. Yeah. Ron <laughs> has it. So that's all you need to know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a great phone. And, um, and then you think about kind of the state of smartphones right now, when you go into a carrier store, Samsung, yes, everybody knows Samsung. Right. Everybody knows Apple, of course, uh, Google people like for whatever reason, people are still kind of reserved when it comes to Google's brand. And then you have the others, you have HTC failing brand. You've yeah. got LG, I'm not going to say failing They're brand, failing. but not, not, no, not, not quite, 
They're not thriving. They're not thriving. So you put a brand like OnePlus and the momentum that they have right now, the quality that they're putting out for that price into a carrier store with the caliber is Verizon. Yeah. I think this is huge for them. Yeah. This is going cool. so, to be a breakout for them. And to build, to build on that, Jason, you know, LG isn't going anywhere because LG is an enormous company that sells lots of electronics. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So It's not so their, their bread and butter. Exactly. It's not their bread and butter, but also their phone category. It's just another category. They also sell washer dryers, for Christ's sake. You know, like the same, same thing as Samsung. Yeah, they do. Yeah, same thing as Samsung and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. OnePlus, this is all, aside from this and backpacks, this is all they do. <laughs> and and don't You can't wrong, buy their backpacks, they, or can you? They, they, Which they is a bummer. Yeah, they sell some amazing backpacks. I mean, I got the first backpack. It's right here. And this is like a, a game changer backpack. I, oh, I wish I could get the second one. Oh, but um, but no, but but realistically, they, this is this is all they're focused on. And I got to tell you, you know, after, you know, it's been almost a year of being, you know, I was on the one plus six and the 6T and now the seven pro and I'll have the seven pro and I'll be at work or I'll be out socially and people will stop me and be like, what phone is that? You know, nice. it's been a, and, and I'm not the, you know, we all know we don't carry iPhones. I don't carry the Samsung. I, ha I haven't, you know, I've only, I've only had one pixel, but it's been a long time since anyone's asked me what my phone was and want to see it and, and want to know why, why the sides are like that or what, or, or when I show them the pop-up camera that blows their mind. <laughs> um, so like OnePlus does impress. I think they, they are definitely, they, 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 they were quirky when the, when they first came out, they had all those marketing foibles, but now they seem to be maturing in the right direction. I completely agree. They're very impressive at this point. They're firing on all cylinders. Uh, just don't mess it up in the, the in your marketing. You know? And they've done a good job. We, when did we last reset the clock? I don't even know. It's been a while. I, I, been think, a while. I think Wade County makes a good point, and I just want to get y'all's response on it. What if Google were to price their phones the way OnePlus prices their phones? Who would win that battle? I think well, that... I think that would be much better for Google, to be honest. Yeah. Like, you know, they're, and I mean, they're kind of doing that a little bit with the 3A. I mean, granted, the Not specs saying, in the 3A, different horsepower in it. Different though. horsepower for sure. But the 3A was, is hitting at a price point that's way closer to OnePlus and shows that there's demand for that, for great phones in that price category. Mm -hmm. People who bought the 3A, I'm assuming a lot of them did it because of the, the quality of the camera. Right. And that's the most important thing to them in a smartphone. And finding a $400 smartphone that has that quality, like literally the best camera in smartphones. Right. Um, possibly that's changed with the new, the new iPhone uh, per some people out there. But I mean, getting that for $400 is redonkulous. Yeah. And yeah. the OnePlus, you know, phones are definitely more in that category. They're more expensive. But yeah, if Google took its premium tier and knocked it down to $300 and got it closer to that OnePlus price point, I think it'd be way better for Google. I just don't know if it behooves Google to right. do that. Right. Right. <laughs> So I think we are looking at those phones, though, a little too much as enthusiasts. Like the Pixel, I don't think is going after the same market as OnePlus. OnePlus is going after Samsung people. Okay. People yep. who want like that high end, but don't want to pay that high end price. Mm. The Pixel exists solely to sell the Google ecosystem and to push forth what Google does. Um, and because a lot of the people that I see that are attracted to pixels are people who, A, in my life have gotten tired of the iPhone and the walled okay. garden there, right. uh, or and B, people who want to take better photos. Whereas the people who I see who are attracted to OnePlus are people who, like my husband who want a powerful like gaming, a powerful mobile gaming phone, something with a big bezel-less screen, you know, the thing that is flashy like the Samsung phones. Um, but I agree that it would be, it would be, I wish that phones were cheaper than they used to be. Mm -hmm. I wish they were, they cost as much as they used to. Maybe that's a better way to say it. That's a better way to put it. Flo, are you going to get your husband the ROG? No, that, I mean, no. look, as, as excited as I am about onboard cooling of a phone, I mean. <laughs> look, Ron. Seems like it's the, the perfect phone for a gamer. Ron, she's not getting him the ROG, but she might get him the ROG, okay? Yeah, oh, sorry, right. <laughs> she uh, might get him that phone, but definitely not the ROG. <laughs> Uh, will will she get him the Huawei Mate 30 Pro? That is the <laughs> oh, question. Oh no, because 
No, you know, probably not. America yeah. and Huawei don't really mix these days. There's this Ooh. thing right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes that hard. Well, Huawei has a hardware event in just a couple of days. Uh, we know a few things about the Huawei Mate 30 Pro ahead of launch, of course, because there is no such thing as a good surprise anymore. Um, a photo of a demo stand uh, leaked. And it highlighted some key features. And the one that seems to be getting a lot of attention right now really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So, Anne, I'm really happy that you're here because 7,680 frames per second video recording. Uh, my gosh. What not, in the, how oh is that gosh. possible? I am not buying that. Oh, my that. God. <laughs> <laughs> and it, they, you know, everybody's reporting this. It's it's not a misprint as far as we can tell here. Eight times slower than 960 frames per second, which is the slow motion that's utilized by Sony and Samsung, which looks really good, by the way. I mean, these 7,000 frames, we're talking like attempting to follow a, a fastball pitch or something. And mm. that's not happening on a phone. Not it's kind of yeah, it's happening. kind of a crazy claim, isn't yeah, it? Okay, not happening. all right, you don't have the processing power. <clears throat> well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's difficult to know how Huawei would achieve this. Is this just is this just faking the numbers or what? Are uh, you know, and some of this the ideas here is that they're interpolating frames to some degree. Um, are they throwing insane amounts of memory at capturing all those true frames? I'm calling baloney. You're calling baloney, on okay. All of it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm curious and to Bologna see. And Baloney hasn't been popular since the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Baloney has a first name. It's H U A W E Y. Wow. Baloney has a second name. It's M A T three O. Please keep going, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Uh, so I guess we'll find out what that actually means. We'll only have to wait a couple of days. And by the way, who cares that much about slow-mo? Like everybody's making all this hay about the iPhone slow-mo and the slow-mo on the Sony phones and Samsung phones. It's neat, but it's, again, it's one of those things you use like a handful of times ever. The people that would care about it are the people that Flo was talking about earlier that's using the Pixel phone, not that mainstream. You know, okay. the people just going to the, to the pixel, just like she said, they want that camera. They want that functionality, a content creator. But again, you're not going to get that with a phone. You're going to go out and get a, a red or a black magic or something. Yeah. A red. <laughs> if or you're a, trying red to... a red phone. Uh, yeah. red no, no, phone. nobody's getting no, a red not phone. The red phone. <laughs> not the red, not the hydrogen. No. no one's getting the hydrogen. No, don't get the hydrogen one. That's not what we're saying. Uh, and, and just a few other highlights here, uh, two 40 megapixel rear facing cameras, primary and ultra wide, also an eight megapixel rear facing telephoto sensor, 3D depth camera, ultra high definition night camera. So everybody's doing the night mode. Um, I can see all of that. That's computational. Yeah. I, I, I can get down with that. Yeah. And, and Huawei is really good at their AI mm-hmm. uh, on a chip, Kirin 990 Kirin. chipset. It's going to integrate with that. Uh, 4,500 milliamp hour battery, 40 watt wired and 27 watt wireless charging. Just a few of the things that we'll find out when they officially announce the device in a couple of days. I I had someone ask me about uh, a Huawei phone um, just last week and it surprised me because they were like, hey, I I saw something about a Huawei phone and should I get it? And I said, do you live here? <laughs> right. Where did you see yeah. this? And have you read the news? Or? Like, do you live here? And I explained to them and they was like, oh, I did hear rumors about it. I said, no, that's not rumors. That's news. Yeah, you know? that's, that's happening. <laughs> yeah. Europe Europe loves Huawei. Oh, yeah. So yeah that's, no doubt. In, yeah. yeah. In Europe, Huawei is Samsung, like in terms of the big like name it's the big logo they have like hqs all over the place it's uh it's a big deal mm-hmm. outside of the united states we'll see mateo in a couple of weeks right yep so yeah well next week yeah, actually. i just asked oh, him it was for next deodorant week. today Sweet. next week so you know and knowing mateo it's entirely possible if they have review units he might have this yep. and he's going to be in studio so we'll yep. cross our fingers I'm thinking that's unlikely I, I feel like i would have heard that from him by now but uh who, who the heck knows we'll find out <laughs> Well, hopefully, hopefully it's in a mocodile case. Oh yeah. Well, um, one would hope, and yeah. maybe so even I, has a banana for scale. 
his we'll hardware bumper is ready. Okay, good. <laughs> all right, so we've Don't got all the things. Jeez. We've got all the things we need for a Mateo appearance. Uh, do we have the banana? Okay, great. Yeah. We've got the hardware bumper. Check. All right, Mateo's emailed me. He's bringing the Mockadal case. All right, check. check. And he's got a goat-themed app for the arena. We're good. We can, all, we can only hope he's wearing that American flag shirt again. Oh, <laughs> That was oh, great. God. Yeah, that would that would be that would be a ringer right that was there. Great. <laughs> All right, Ronnie, well, got the last one. Yeah, well, hopefully he's got a he's got a Fairphone three that we could take a look at. Um, I doubt it though. But if you want to take a look at the Fairphone three, get all naked. You can go to iFixit uh, where they did a teardown of the phone, and hey, it scored a ten out of ten on repairability. Ten out of um, ten. That's pretty good, that's but that said, this is the, this is a streak because the Fairphone Two also received a ten out of ten, um, and mainly uh, it's because much of the phone requires no special tools uh, to repair it. Fairphone itself provides repair guides to walk users through replacing components themselves. The only ding it got, which I don't feel like is a fair ding, is the fact that some components were soldered um, into place. Which with these kind of phones, sometimes you got to do that. You and if you're take, yeah. you to take a phone apart, be co be comfortable with the soldering iron. Yeah, oh for uh, sure. Yeah, but uh, but geez, it sure would be nice if you could update the uh, system on a chip uh, or the memory to something newer, so that you can have this phone last a little longer. Um, you know, with a device like this, yeah. uh, I love the Fairphone's neat. It's a, uh, it's definitely. I like that it exists in the world. Totally. Uh, yeah, I I respect its place in the in the world of smartphones, and you know it's kind of an kind of a symbol of of what smartphones could do mm -hmm. to a wider degree. They could be more repairable and actually have the earth in mind, you know, uh, to allow you to very easily replace components and not trash your phone the second something breaks and doesn't make yes. sense to repair it yourself and all these things. So it's a it's a good model, I think, for the industry. I don't think any of the other companies are going in this direction, yep. but I'm happy that Fairphone's yeah. doing it. No time soon, trust yeah, me. Yeah, no time soon. <laughs> but really cool. 10 out of 10. You can't do any better than that as far as iFixes is concerned. Nope. All right, and then we have the other kind of hardware. Let's do that now. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They're on his toes today. <laughs> Don't get too comfortable, Victor. He's on his heels at this I point. I have been comfortable all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's been one of those days. All right, Flo, you got this one. Uh, the rest of us are on our heels wondering if uh, Google will ever release its own house brand smartwatch. I know that we were kind of hoping that a, quote, pixel watch, unquote, would <laughs> find its way to this upcoming October 15th event, but... Uh, Doesn't seem that way. I don't know. Probably not that soon. However, that doesn't mean that we won't see one ever. So there was this big article going around uh, this week. It's only Tuesday, so it was yesterday, Monday, uh, at wearable.com, uh, spelled W-A-R-E. A B L E, and uh, with the headline, here's what Google got from Fossil in its forty million dollar deal. So the article kind of like walks through. Uh, it's it's a it's a nice uh, it's a nice big article, uh, something you can read over your morning coffee. So Google paid forty million back in January for Fossil IP and staff. Uh, no, no chump change. They said at the time it was for quote new product innovation that's not yet hit the market quote. Uh, sources say this is a hybrid smartwatch dubbed Diana, probably in memory of Princess Diana, rest in peace. Uh, but actually it stands for <laughs> digital analog. <laughs> what, Maybe. Like, probably. Probably. Like, you said that so confidently. Like it's no. like, cause <laughs> okay. Just, I, Princess I Diana just, like, was yearning for a world where smartwatches were, were of a high enough caliber, and sadly she never got to see the day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so there's been a there's been an Instagram meme with Diana, like about her fashion back in the day, because it's making it bad like Gen Z is adopted or whatever. So I, anyway, I was trying to <laughs> anyway, digital analog. If you take DI and ANA from the second one, it spells Diana. Yep. So this would be a family of watches that <laughs> integrate digital features into analog designs. We've seen this from Fossil. Uh, I assume it would be something a little more technical than what they have now. Right now, they just kind of have like you have a mechanical watch face with Bluetooth uh Bluetooth syncing with your phone, and then you kind of have to check your phone for the rest of, of the information. 
it would uh, use less, so it would have less power consumption than the traditional smartwatch, which has kind of been the bane of the Wear OS ecosystem at this time. It's like, yay, Wear OS is like, it's, you know, it's got a good interface, it's got the assistant, it's got the app ecosystem, but those things don't last a very long time. Now, we're still uncertain if this tech will become a part of the Pixel Watch per se, or even if the Pixel Watch will become a thing, but it's safe to say that Google's blessed, blessing whatever Diana is, and, um, you know, it's hopefully it'll it'll be just as giving as our princess was. <laughs> what? <laughs> I love wow. that you're continuing down this road. Sorry, wow. I took that really she far. Just, but she I think look, she passed away in 1997. We've, we've moved on. <laughs> we have not moved on. Thank you very much. I'm fighting words, Jesus. Jason. Yeah, 22 I'm gonna years get, ago. I'm going to get some email on that one. I, <laughs> My really. word. All right, well, let, 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 let's let that breathe a little, and let's thank a sponsor before we move on. Uh, this episode of All About Android is brought to you by LegalZoom. Uh, and listen, it is hard. I, I can't believe it myself. It's hard to believe that summer is past us. It's in the rearview mirror. But as a vacation season wraps up and you fall back into your normal routine, back to school and all, uh, here's an opportunity to get stuff done with LegalZoom. Uh, LegalZoom is great because they make all the hard legal things very easy. Um, I've tried, I've started companies. I've started an LLC. It was very hard to figure out if I had LegalZoom it would have made it much easier. I've got to do my living trust and will, and then I have children. I'm going to be using LegalZoom to do that because they put, uh, uh, you know, they give you all these great resources in your hands and you can do it yourself. Um, you know, right now LegalZoom is making it easier to say so long to summer by saving you 10% off the, uh, off the things that you need to accomplish. Like I mentioned, I'm a small business owner, entrepreneur, and if you're like me and you need to set up that LLC or a DBA or an S Corp for your business, now's the time to do it and save money. If you've been meaning to wrap up your last will or living trust like I need to do, but you can't seem to find the time, like I can't, uh, take a moment and do the right thing for your family. Go to LegalZoom. And if you're confused or have questions, don't let that slow you down. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but their network of independent attorneys and tax professionals can give you the advice you need to make the right decision. There's nothing better than informed decisions, and LegalZoom can help you do that. So save 10% for a limited time on the things you've been meaning to do with LegalZoom. Just go to LegalZoom.com right now and use code AAA. That's LegalZoom.com and use code AAA. LegalZoom, where life meets legal. Thanks, LegalZoom. Thank now, you, LegalZoom. Let's go into the apps. Okay. Apps, apps, let's, let's do apps, that. App, app, baby. The app carousel in the background of old app logos. Old app icons. You know what? It's a it's a time it's a time machine. Mm, it's it's a time a, capsule. Yeah, time capsule is what I meant to say. Absolutely, it's also a time, a time machine, machine as well. Yeah, they both work. I like yeah. I like time machines, so I'll take it. Uh, the new Pixel Four is going to have a completely redesigned Google Camera app, and I think last week did we talk about the astrophotography capabilities of the of the new phone? Mm, that, we did. That are expected? We did. Mm -hmm. Well, XDA apparently has this app already. Uh, some notable new features. I know they're really good at that. <laughs> uh, a redesigned options interface and look. So things are kind of repositioned and uh, they kind of pop up in a different way in the center of the screen with a scrolling window and everything. It looks really nice. A new infinity focus setting for night sight, which I am so happy about. Sometimes with night sight, it's so Finally. dark outside and it can't get a good focus on things. Right. And so setting it to infinity, it's not going to do its weird little scanning focus sort of thing. It'll just, it'll everything will be in focus. It's, it's all the way out, but it should solidify, I think, yep. the quality of your night side photos. Uh, zoom and exposure sliders are going to be smoother when you're transitioning. And that, I think, will come in handy when you're or shooting a video. And you want to zoom in <laughs> instead of it being kind of like, like a chunky jarring. zoom or whatever. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I welcome like that. Swoop in a little bit. At least that's what I imagine from reading this. That's what it's going to do. Uh, and then when you hold the shutter in photo mode, it used to do smart burst. burst. Mm -hmm. But now it's not going to do that. It's going to record a video. Smart burst is going away, apparently. Uh, we may have talked about that before, but I think when I was writing the notes for this, I realized like I actually use Smart Burst, yeah, and that's a bummer because sometimes things are moving, and I I don't want to like have to yeah grab the right, right moment. I just want to take seven yeah. or eight and then grab the right moment for. Or that. friends are finicky and they're like, mm, 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 yes, mm, yeah. mm, you know, yeah. 
So you take 30 photos of their face. We call it spray and pray. That's what we call it. <laughs> what is that? Spray and pray. <laughs> nice. That works. But it's useful though, because yeah. you, you get all of those extra frames per second and you can really, you know, freeze action too, especially if it's yeah. like a totally. moving person. Yeah, you know? totally. Um, XDA also posted photo samples showing off the new astrophotography feature of the camera app. Now, of course, this was on a Pixel 3, um, unless they have a Pixel 4 they're not telling anybody about. But uh, as far as I know, this was on a Pixel 3. The differences between normal night sight mode, uh, mode shooting the sky and then the new night sight for the starry skies is actually pretty impressive. They have the side-by-sides, and if you pull up the first one on the left, you kind of see some noise. You see a little kind of a filtery noise there. You go to the one on the right, Things are smooth as mm. silk. Look at that. Mm. That's beautiful. That's awesome. And that's just with the like a night sky. Phone. Dang. And with a <laughs> Pixel 3, no less. So I'm really excited for that feature. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'd like to see uh, that market again that Miss Flo was talking about. The people that are more serious about it, how, how they would react with this. this If they would care. This tool and... and you know, because I have a tripod mount that I use for, for my phone and it it's a tool, you know, so I want to yeah. take advantage of all of these things. Yeah. So, and I, I watched the video on the, the guy from XDA that shot this. I can't remember his name, but there's a video that you can link to uh, in the show notes, twit.tv slash AAA. We'll have the show notes and a link to the video. And uh, it shows him using the interface. And actually when you're shooting the astrophotography mode, it's like a long shutter. It's it not just like a quick like five second ch -ch chunk, which right. is what I did when I shot the starry sky like a month ago on my mm -hmm. backpacking trip. And that worked fine. I came up with some pretty good photos, decent, yeah. but nothing compared to these. Right. Um, and on the, in this case, it was like 30 seconds or something. So yeah, there he's using the... Uh, the interface right now. I think if you skip back, well, wait a minute. Yeah, and see, he has it on a tripod yeah, he, too. Yes, see? and he does have it on a tripod. That's what but I yeah, want to see is that. more people that are a little more serious about it. How will they take advantage of it and what will be shared? Right, because if know? it's required to have a tripod, not many people are probably going to do that. Not a lot of that. people do that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but nice to know that you can. I mean, cool that you can with a phone. Just how far is that really going to get the yeah. phone? You know? <laughs> is that going to sell more units? Yeah, maybe some, but... I'm Anyways, excited. I think it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you love excited. you love photography. Uh, so cool stuff. Ron, you got the next one. Yeah. So earlier in the show, Ant, you gave a shout out to the folks at Chrome for keeping it updated and, and maintained and, and having constant updates, right? The Chrome is the, the, the browser we all use. Mm -hmm. um, well, from the from the, the I thought it was already in the browser file. Um, Chrome, <laughs> Chrome's latest <laughs> updates, number 77, brings easy sharing of web content between devices and desktops. Now you can right click on a um, on a right click on something, and a new menu appears to send web page to your other devices connected to your account. So it's kind of like what Push Push Bullet Push Bullet did. Oh, what six years ago, but <sighs> baked into Chrome finally. So finally, yeah. I seriously thought they had implemented this years ago. I don't know why it took this long for it to happen, but uh, but yeah. So it's in uh, in the new Chrome 77 build. So now you can share it to other devices. Very cool. Yeah, uh, it's a must have. Must have. Yeah, and I think what you could do before is that all this is synced to your history. Yeah, and that's what I was doing. Is yeah, going I think that's what the history tab, and yep. sometimes that's annoying. Yeah, I'd rather it just be a quick tab and a little yeah. notification on the device. Yeah. You know that. Thank you, Google. Yeah, you go. Do you remember, you go Jason? Before before push bullet, do you remember Chrome to phone? Chrome, Chrome to, to phone. phone. Yeah, ah, that's a blast from the past. Yes. Yep. The, the, the Chrome extension that did this. Yeah. So. Yep. Nice. I do remember that. Uh, so maybe that's what you were thinking of, Ron. That, the, that was a long no, time ago. No, because that, that was before Push Bullet. Because Push Bullet, Chrome to Phone was like, I don't know why Push Bullet was so much better than Chrome to Phone, but Chrome to Phone was shaky, if I remember correctly, and Push Bullet just did it so nicely and smoothly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, but it, it's, it, yeah, it, it, this is just a must have functionality. So cool that they're finally doing it. Oh man, I still have Push Bullet as an extension on my browser. I have not used it in wow, years. Dude. I should probably remove that. Yeah, go ahead and let it go. Go <laughs> okay. let it go. It's yeah, okay I wonder, to let it go. I, I wonder when I'm my last certain, share was. I'm, I'm fairly, fairly certain I still pay the subscription for it. So I've, <laughs> I've supported my devs. Yes, so. you have. Uh, my last share was October 4th, 2016. Wow. Wow. Um, so yeah. There we go. To the uh, Nexus 5, maybe? 
I don't know. I got to un- <laughs> uninstall that. Okay, Flo, you got the next one. So we were actually talking about this last week in the arena. Uh, David Roddick had brought in an app that kind of uh, replaces what Spotify has taken away. But what Spotify has taken away, it now has brought back. Uh, so <laughs> the Spotify community wanted the return of the Spotify widget. They're getting their wish. They've prayed hard enough. They've done the rain dances. They have <laughs> sacrificed the lambs. Uh, the widget is officially back in the latest version of the app, uh, including a new feature, which is, wow, the ability to resize it. Whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. Shut the Amazing. front door. <laughs> Amazing. Good bravo, job, Spotify. Bravo. <laughs> I, I, I do like that we predicted this was going to be a long time before they brought it back, and here a week later, it's back. Outstanding. Um, good, good work, Spotify. Good job. Yeah. Good job. They saw that that uh, apps were coming along that were going to steal their thunder, and they would not yeah. have that. That's what it was. Oh, no. Uh, and then we have an email to AAA at twit.tv, or you can leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Mike did send us an email anyways and said, hey, AAA team, I have a question about an Android app that is no longer available in Google Play. The app is and money, A-N money, all one word. He says, I use it to track all my expenses and income. I really like the app and have several years of data in it. Since it is no longer available in the Play Store, I'm afraid when I upgrade cell phones, I will not be able to load the app on the new phone. Is there a way I can save the app for future installation on a newer device? <clears throat> and I think there are a number of things that you could probably do here. I did a search online to see if APK Mirror had it. That's always my go-to source for uh, app APK backups. They don't actually have a copy of this app there. Uh, another service, though, that is very popular is Aptoid, A-P-T-O-I-D-E. And they do have backups of the APK uh, from there. So you could go there and you could download the latest version. They also have kind of a history of APKs that you can go back in time if there maybe th there was ever an update. So that's more like a general recommendation on any app. You can go back in time and be like, hey, I didn't like the latest update. Right. Go back and download it. Um, question I have about this app is whether it relies on authentication. Like if it's a paid app, do you have to sign in in order to use it? Does that require a server uh, that's operating in the cloud? Or, or what? When you download this app, are you going to be able to authenticate, I guess, is, is what I'm wondering. Um, so that's something to consider. If they've shut down the services that run that, it might not matter. If the developer is just totally out of it, you might be out of luck. And I hope that they have some sort of data export capability. Yeah, I thought that <clears throat> I, this is probably my ignorance about Android, but I thought you were backing up your phones and backing up your data, you could still get a lot of those old apps installed because it seems like whenever I change phones, mm. everything just sort of shows up. That's true. That's a good point. Um, if you've installed an app from the Play Store and then the developer removes it, it won't show up for new users who have never installed it before. But you could usually, and I say usually because it's very possible that this has changed. Right. But I, in my experience, I can still go into my history and find it there and yeah. re-download it, even from a new phone. I so that's something see, to check as well. Yeah, I still see a whole bunch of my old apps that, you know, sometimes I forget about them and yeah. they, they show up on my phone. Yeah, you know? totally. Um, that's probably the, the first thing you should do. Because hit, hit the backup you want, option. <laughs> I would say in any in any way, shape, or form, you should probably go to the Play Store first because that's where yeah. you got the app initially. And that's just, yeah, that's the no-brainer way if it's going to be there. Excellent. There are other apps that allow you to back up the APK that you have installed on the phone that you already have. Mm. Um, some of them require root in order to do this. Some folks in chat are, are piping in. Aspire says ES File Explorer will allow you to make APKs on your phone. Um, so you might run that and see if you can pull the APK from this particular app. There might be reasons why that doesn't work, you know, right. namely piracy and that sort of stuff. You know, they might yeah. have it locked down. So um, look for that as well. But And then I would say once you get that APK, like save it to your Google Drive. Yeah. Throw it in your drive. Then you always have it. And then anytime you install a new phone, you can just pull it down from there and, and you've got it kind of archived. But uh, But it does point out, 
just kind of that it it sucks to spend years using a particular app for something as critical and important as your yeah. finances. Yeah. And I, man, I feel your pain there. Like it would really suck to, to have all that data and something like that. I and think then, about services no like say Evernote or what have you, because there's been different note taking apps out there over the years yeah. that, that have folded that people were relying on and have to yeah. do a yeah. mass <laughs> export and yeah. all of that. And oh, the worst, I mean, it, it is what it is. You just got to find a way to back up stuff pretty regularly. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, I, I do all of my, my wife and I do all of our budgeting using a, an online, um, service called YNAB, which stands for you need a budget. Love it. Like it's literally changed our life as far as managing our finances is concerned. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's always that lingering fear. Like they're a service and I know the company's doing well. They're super popular and right. everything, but you just never know. You there's never, never know. that 100% certainty that that's going to be there 10 years from You're now. Right. You never know. You know, so I guess that's the risk you take by using apps and services. It just back is. Up, back yep. up, back up, back up. Yeah. So anyways, thanks for uh, writing, Mike. Uh, anyone else that wants to write can do so. Like I said, AAA at twit.tv. Let's take a break and thank the sponsor, and then we will get into the arena and we'll duke it out. <laughs> See, I'm going to hit my microphone even. Uh, but first, this episode of All About Android is brought to you by IT Pro TV, so you can enjoy learning. With IT Pro TV's edutainers who blend education and entertainment to make I, uh, IT learning in both engaging and fun in an interactive talk show format uh, that you're already used to. You watch Twit, you know the talk show format. It's what we do here, it's what IT Pro TV does, like the pros that they are. IT Pro TV has over 4,000 hours of IT training available, and they are the official video training partner for CompTIA. They have 12 CompTIA on-demand courses, CompTIA A+, Network+, Plus, and Security+, Plus certs. And if you want to create your own training videos, you probably haven't heard of this before, but IT Pro TV can help you create custom training to meet your organization's needs, uh, from planning to post-production to all the things in between. You can choose the services that you want and execute on your video strategy Easily, you just bring your own host or use one of IT Pro TVs if you like. You can pick from multiple HD studios that include HD robotic cameras, DMX dimmable LED lighting, overhead talkback monitor, direct live streaming systems, and so much more. Whether you're new to the IT field or a seasoned pro, IT Pro TV's online IT training courses can change your life. You can become a part of IT Pro TV's family with either a standard membership, that would be video only, or a premium membership, which is video, as well as all the labs and practice tests that'll take you to the next level. Don't wait. Visit go.itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid and use code AAA30 and you're going to receive 30% off. That's go.itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid and use code AAA30 for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active subscription. IT Pro TV, build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey. It's what it's all about. And we thank IT Pro TV for their support of All About Android. And with that, it's time for the arena. <laughs> So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. The peaceful arena. Where the birds so are the birds are chirping. It's a, it's such a like aggressive bumper and like concept, Darn. and then to do the juxtaposition yes. of the opposite is just amazing. So, yeah. Good, good. Always looking to change yeah. things up a little bit. Uh, let's see here. I did get the results to Wade County. Excellent. So okay. So yeah. looking at this week's poll results uh, from episode or last week's rather from episode four thirty seven, and the winner is Samsung Health. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. You wow. won. You got wow. your Samsung Health win. Nice. 30, 39% round. It is up. shocking. <laughs> <laughs> and also second place is uh was my app Vivaldi uh browser beta at 33%. Uh third place looks to be Flip Do Not Disturb. That was Ron's at right around 18%. And then fourth place, Spot Widget at eleven percent. So that was Team Guest getting the last All place. Right. 
Oh well, Flo, with that win after 36 weeks, uh, solidifies her first place standings with 115 points. Uh, guests, Ant, you'll be representing, are in second place with 101 points. Uh, Jason, you get, you're, you're getting getting used to being in third with 77 points. All right, I'll and take I'm it. having I'm having an awful year with 72 points. So, well, you know what time, that means. Though. You know what there's that still means. Time. I, well, I mean, we're running we're running short, Ron. I don't know that there's still time. We're, you could either you or I could put a run in, and that's true, that's true. you know it, it could happen. It could definitely happen. Do run, Ron. Um, Ron, do way run. To be run. positive. Okay. Yeah. So so I'm going to start, and uh, my app this week is called Volume Panel Pro. And if you act now, you can go in the store. Normally it's 99 cents, but it's uh, on special. It's free right now, so I you can know. go get it. Totally for free, which is nice. And if you've been complaining about the lack of uh, control of your volume on your phone, uh, this app is for you. This is going to solve all those problems uh, just with one app. It's amazing. Uh, so when you open it up there, you need to do your permissions, the usual permissions. You got a granted, um, what was it, uh, notification and, yeah. and uh, right over apps and that sort of thing. Accessibility. And so ba yeah. Yeah, so so the accessibility and that sort of thing. It's got a dark mode. I just want to call that out for everyone. It does have a dark mode. It also has a left-handed mode, which I thought was really interesting. And Jason, you're left-handed, right? No, I'm not. But I play I one on TV. Left no, I'm right-handed. I thought you're left-handed. Who's left-handed in uh, Twit? Someone was. Anyway, Jason, pretend is. you're left-handed. Well, Micah is, I believe. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Um, but basically, this gives you total control over the volume panel so that you're able to not only specify whether it's dark or left-handed or where it's positioned on the phone and what the slider color is and all stuff like that, um, but it also allows you to, when you hit that volume rocker, to not only see the volume that Android has decided you're adjusting, but to be able to adjust your alarm volume, your media volume, and your uh, notification volume at the same time, which to me is all we need in this world because for, uh, it's been several versions of Android and I still get frustrated. I'm like, no, I don't want to turn up the ringer. I want to turn up the music and mm, that sort of man, thing. I'm so, with you on that. Yeah, right? So it's really cool in that this enables you to, you know, take this overlay panel and customize how it looks and customize what it can do. But then you can also, um, you know, specify exactly which volume streams show up in that. And you can exclude applications, which is pretty cool. There down at the bottom, you could say uh, you can you can say don't show this for certain apps and that sort of thing. So it gives you control over it, which is really cool. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's pretty neat. And it's also got quick access uh, to uh, alarms. Um, you can instantly mute media or casting when you're doing it. You can switch to your speaker when in a call. It's got it's it's really it's really well thought out and there's just a lot you could do with this app and it's amazing. So we're looking right now when the app is opened and uh, Jason actually has it going, but if you just go back and hit the menu button, there it is. Those are all three. If you hit those, uh, if you hit that settings there, that's the usual settings where you can go in and adjust the sounds. It's a one tap to jump right into the Android settings for sounds and audio. Um, so yeah, so Volume Panel Pro, take control of your volume controls, be able to do whatever you want with your volume uh, thanks to this app. So there it is, Volume Panel Pro. Rad on, Volume Panel yeah. Pro, normally a dollar, but right now, zero. It's free. It's free. And it's, by, it's by an independent uh, developer who looking, you know, I've, lately I've been going through the comments of the apps before I choose it and stuff like that. And yeah. he's responding to everybody who's complaining, who's who's got a, you know, kind of a pointing out a bug or something like that. He's very active in the comments. It's clearly he's put a lot of effort into this. So support your devs, Volume Panel Pro. And nice. those, le those left-handed folks out there in the world, now here's an app specifically made for you. Ron gets your <laughs> vote. Because yes. you're like, you care about me, Ron. Okay, you got to stick together. Me. You see me. I'm uh, not left-handed. Okay. But you see them, <laughs> and that's important. Uh, Volume Panel Pro. All right. My app, uh, I have to thank Paul Matthews for. Paul uh, emailed me and said, hey, check this out. And I did. And I was like, that's really cool. And then I realized, like, apparently... We've known about it at Twit for a long time, and I just it's been off my radar. It has not been in the arena, as far as I know, because I didn't check, but I'm pretty certain it hasn't. Oh, boy. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, I'm sure someone's going to check it while I while I start doing the, because I realize I didn't check it in the in the doc. It's called What Three Words? All one word. What three words all together, the number three in the middle. And, uh, well, that appears to be, is that the site, or is that a screenshot from it? 
that's the site. Okay, so I guess you can go to the site and you can you can plug it in too. What is what three words? Basically, what it is is it maps the world in three meter by three meter blocks, and then it assigns each block a three word name. Well, why is that important? Because if you want to share your address or where you are, or where you happen to be, uh, so that someone can find you, let's say, sometimes it's a very rough location spot. But what um, what this does is in mapping the world by three meter by three meter blocks, it allows you to get really precise as far as where you're sharing the location that you're sharing. So you can see here, I'll go ahead and turn on my phone here. You can see this, this little uh, panel. This is how I know that I'm so not the first to this thing, because apparently this is our address here at the studio. Uh, <laughs> Glow.walnut.nasal. So I'll go ahead and open up what three words. <clears throat> we'll launch it. Right now, it's 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 putting my location as unique.benefit.wand because I mean the reality is this studio is there's a lot of one meter by or three meter by three meter blocks here. Yep. So one of them is represented by glow.walnut.nasal. Another one is represented <laughs> by unique.benefit.wand. Another one that I found, which if I go to my saved locations and favorites, I really liked it. Rebel slams frenzy. <laughs> I just thought that was great. And uh, that's that's Twit as well. So that's another block here. And you can see all these different blocks have a different name. This is limiting toward chuckle. So if I happen to be out on the street somewhere <laughs> and I was like, you need to meet me at this particular point, not on the corner, I'm over standing over here, you can get really specific about the point that you want someone to find you at. And you can give them this address and you can share it out uh, or you can navigate to there from the map. Let's see here. If I navigate here, <laughs> it gives me the option to pull it up in maps. So it would just send me to that lat long point right. on the map. Uh, or I could use the built-in offline compass. This is part of the app and it allows you to navigate yourself Looking where you back. happen to be standing to get to the point. This might actually come in really handy for things like what is what is the game where people hide things and, and you got to go find Geocaching. them? Geocaching. Geocaching. There yeah. we go. So this would probably be really beneficial for geocaching because then you cool. like plug it in and go find exactly where that um that thing is um so it's just a really granular way of sharing your location and i could you know navigate there or whatever i could hey, share use it. it at ces 2020 was that use it at ces 2020 as you're navigating that huge mm. convention oh yeah no that's kidding a good idea man. that's a very good idea no kidding and i could share it out uh to you know anyone that i want you can actually go into the settings here and uh, and detail what you want to share when you do. And it gives you a little preview here. So, you know, there's the URL that would take you to the website. I have included latitude and longitude settings. So it does the lat long up there. And then it describes what it is. This three word address refers to an exact three meter by three meter location. Tap the link or enter the three words into the free what three words words app to find it. And then anyone could navigate to there. So just kind of an interesting approach to yeah. very specific location sharing. Um, and it supports, it has support for over 20 languages. When you first launch the app, it gives this huge list of languages that you can pick nice. from. So, um, yeah, just really neat. I like the approach. It's very unique. And, this and is some free. of the names that it comes up with assured throat consumed, <laughs> hopeful trip innovator. This could be a brand, a band name namer, you know, a band namer. Yeah. You could name your band. The movie goes traded or the snap props insect. <laughs> Or the window regime tamed. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Anyways, it's a lot of fun and it's very interesting. It's called What Three Words All One Word. And there you go. Glow Walnut Nasal. There we are. <laughs> We're famous. Glow.walnut.nasal on a map. Inside studio. That's right. Uh, and it's What Three Words. And that's free. And thanks again to Paul Matthews for the, for the, uh, hopefully the win. We'll see. All right. Uh, Ant, you have uh, the guest pick. So what you got? Oh, boy. Put me on the spot. Yep, um, that's what we do. First and foremost, I don't install a lot of apps uh, in general. Um, most of the apps that I use are content, create, content creator based, and you typically just download them once and you don't really bounce around too often. So one of mine is Lapsit, Lapsit Pro in particular. I originally had the free version, but I ended up going to the paid version. I think the paid version is now three bucks, I believe, something like that. Hopefully I can show this properly. 
Um, but this is a time lapse uh, application. Yeah, you have a lot of time lapse features involved in some of the camera apps, uh, native camera apps on phones today. But I've always enjoyed using this because of the uh, extra features that are built in far as uh, taking care of how many frames per second and the resolution and so forth. Now, back on this main screen, you have this settings option and it's pretty granular. But I've found that I hardly ever have to use this because once you render something, it allows you to uh, do additional uh, settings within it. Let me go to it here because this is what I shot yesterday, actually. But when you go into the render settings, you can still add even more. All right. But yeah, once you get into the render um, settings of the of your time lapse, it gives you a bunch of different options as far as the formatting and changing the frames per second. And it has an additional. Um, sorry. Dang it. I keep moving. Sorry. I know. It's all good. Um, and then they have. Uh, now nah, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, oh, but it has another render engine in there it, it, that you can use if you have a pretty powerful uh, smartphone, which most of them are nowadays. And it just outputs it to a regular folder and you can share it where have you, whether it's social uh, social media or just put it up on your uh, YouTube or whatever. But it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can trim it down to make it shorter if you want. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. The light is just uh, still it's a pain in the studio. Yeah. It's different effects. I never use the effects. The music that is in, that's been available um has been royalty free, but I never use the music. I always like to use my own if I'm going to put it up in post somewhere. Yeah. Um but yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a really slick interface and really easy to use. And depending on your phone, you can get really nice output. This was published yesterday on my Instagram stories i believe and it looked pretty good it's just and as slick as using a dslr i actually set this up on a tripod yesterday at the house and um changed the zoom and so forth and the resolution came out really really well nice but, but that slaps it you can get it for free or you can get the pro version which uses the the additional render yeah. um renderer and i think it's three bucks i can't remember i bought it so long ago but i think it's three bucks paid for itself at this point if it has that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> it has laps laps it pro. pro now i do have a question what since i'm now twit staff officially twit staff, oh yeah do i get to vote you yes. always could vote oh you can always oh. vote yeah okay. you yeah. could always vote okay well i mean i, I voted yeah. before yeah but now that i'm official twit oh staff. heck yes i've already voted for my app oh, yes okay. you can oh All yeah right. we we will we always vote <laughs> for our own apps on, on yes. possibly on multiple computers <laughs> <laughs> now, i don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> but I think we just learned something. Uh, <laughs> yes, you can indeed vote for, for whatever app you want, of course. Sweet. We aren't that my, strict. My, my freelancers in India have something to say. There you <laughs> go. There you go. Look, I've got a payroll, okay? There's a reason I'm... No, actually, you're losing, so that wouldn't work. Okay, finally, Flo, we're, we're, we have your app, and I just realized it says subscription. I don't know that I signed up for a subscription, so... You I, can do a free three-day trial, so just right. remember to cancel it. Uh, or keep it show. if I love it. Or keep so, it. I mean, yes, if you want it. I mean, we'll see if I... Okay. All right. Well, I'm Sorry. signing up for an account now, so go ahead and start talking about it. And All righty. So, listen, we're busy people in this world. We're constantly on the go, going places. And so I found the easiest way to consume content these days is through my ears. Nice. Right. Because I'm either walking with headphones in or I'm in my car. So one thing that I don't get to do enough of is read articles, which is a super bummer. However, it turns out that uh, some of your favorite publications out there are getting on board with that fact. And now these aren't podcasts, but rather they are uh, lovely dictated versions of articles that exist on the web. Oh. So this app is called Autumn which I, I think is how you pronounce it. It's subscription-based. It costs uh, $7.99 a month or $5 a month if you sign up for a whole year. And as I just mentioned, you can do a three-day trial to try it out and see if this is something that you're interested in. So this is the Autumn main interface. Uh, let's start first with 
Let's uh, go ahead, tap on publisher, Jason, up in the top left corner. Here you can choose from the different publishers that are uh, offering content. We have publishers like BuzzFeed News, The Atlantic, uh, Foreign Policy, if that's your thing, uh, Harper's Bazaar, Mother's jo Mother Jones, Wired, Reveal, just a lot of uh, really outstanding places. And uh, Jason, if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and tap on, tap on Wired just because it's it relates to our audience <laughs> and just kind of add that in there. Uh, now it's going to load. And it'll load. And you got Wi-Fi? Are load. you on Wi-Fi? Okay, there we go. Yeah. Uh, so as you'll see here, okay, we've got stuff. All right, so hey, Jason, that Wired article looks pretty interesting. Why don't you go ahead and tap on that plus sign in the oh, I see. lower? So that that gives you the, the so summary. Okay. So go ahead and tap on that plus sign. Now you want to go ahead and you can download it for later or you can play it next immediately, which will start streaming it. I always choose download for later because I like to keep a queue going for when I don't know whenever I'm going to listen to it, right? Um, okay, that's great. So now you can go ahead and, I don't know, let's add one more just for, yeah, just for posterity. You can, if you go back to Discover, we're going to wait for these to download. And you can also look by narrator if you go at the top, Jason. Um, I don't immediately know a lot of these people yet because I think that these are people specifically that they have been hired for this role. But it does, you know, eventually you get to learn people. And if you are a big fan of a particular publisher, you could also go to the author page and choose um, go by author. So if you go by author and um, why don't you scroll all the way down to the last name T if you can. Okay, give me a second. There's a lot of authors Sorry. here. My goodness. <laughs> I'm trying to buy some time while things download. QRS. Okay, T. Uh, look, for, look for Natasha Tiku, T-I-K-U. Okay, T-I. She should be on there. Uh, T-I-N, T-I-Z. No. Gosh darn it. Okay, never mind then, uh, because she did have an article that I was going to show off, um, but I didn't come in. So, whoops. All right. So, whatever. It's fine. Go back. We can, we can just go back. All right. I think it's probably downloaded at this yeah. point. Yeah. So, okay. There's a cue. You can go. Do you tap on it to start playing it? Uh, and now... So if you want, you can immediately listen to it. If you don't feel like listening to it, maybe you just want to read it, you can also hit the pause button and uh, and read it like a like you're reading something because it's text. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? Uh, or you can or you can go ahead and uh, go back and play it, Jason. And you can adjust the speed, the playback speed there in the bottom uh, le left corner. Uh, you can rewind. You can fast forward. Uh, they're still working on the sharing module. I, I'm assuming they're working on something kind of like uh, Overcast-ish where you can share a snippet. So that's not immediately available. Uh, but go ahead and tap that floating action button. And that just takes you to where you were. Oh, I see. Because it does the scrolling, Scans yes, to kind yeah. of go with the audio. So uh, go ahead and uh, hit back. And okay, so you're just browsing around. You can go to the play screen, playing screen, kind of see like what's currently in progress. Uh, and that's autumn. Nice. In a nutshell. And this is not this is not AI narrated. This is actual no, people this is, in a this studio. Is, this is journalism. Like yeah. these are people who are paid to uh, read this content and make it sound interesting. So you're basically getting you're basically getting a nicely dick. It's like an audio book, but yeah. it's an article. Totally. Yeah. That's really handy. That's so. that's awesome. And you'll usually find with uh, publications like Wired, for instance, what I was going to point you to was the big Google cover story that they had. And mm -hmm. so that is available. It's a, of course, because because it's such a long article, um, it's about a one and a half hour feature. So, wow. you know, something you can put on as you're cleaning or what have you. 
Yeah. And so it's just like a nice way to consume content. And I like it because you can pay for it as you go. So if you want to pay for it just monthly, you'll do that through Google. You know, the Google Play uh, infrastructure kind of lets you easily go in and cancel your subscription or subscribe for a month if you just want to listen to an article that um, came out, but you don't have time to read it. So Autumn, it's spelled A-U-D-M. A-U-D-M, yes. Somebody told me about this this app. Um, I couldn't remember the name of it, but I did think that was pretty pretty cool. Yeah, that's neat. I like that a lot. Um, perfect for the discerning podcast listener, <laughs> I would say. So, okay, so the uh, seven-day free trial, and then what is this? Three-day three day free oh, sorry, trial. Sorry, three-day free trial. And then it costs how much when it kicks in? I didn't. I didn't Seven ninety nine if you pay for it monthly, so you can pay for it per month, or five dollars a month if you pay for it up front annually, like nice. for a whole year. Right. Right. Okay. Well, that's really handy because it's a lot of publications, and and there's there are people out there that are, I hate saying it this way, religious about reading their their articles throughout the day, and, and yeah, this just gives you another way of making sure you're able to consume it. Yeah. On the go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do you happen to, have you noticed like how, what the turnaround time is for like an article that hits a publication and then when it appears in audio form? If it's a big article, like the wired one I mentioned, yeah. they will have, they will have the package ready the minute it publishes. Oh, because, that's sweet. I mean, yeah. like wired has Condé Nast behind it. So you yeah. have these big publishers that are like, we got to push it. Yep. And actually, if you go to some of these websites, like the Atlantic, they already have the audio on the site, which maybe I'm giving a, away a little tip that's going against me, but, uh, it's just to kind of show that this is a direction, you know, it's a direction journalism is trying to move in because totally. new media, baby. Well, yeah. And, and there's, <laughs> a, and there's a lot of habits that are forming for people around listening to content like yeah. this. Um, and so the more that people can be offered to, to those right people, now? the more their content is going to be actually consumed yep. by people and yeah. uh, be worth yep. something. So that's really cool. Uh, that app is Autumn, A-U-D-M, one word. All right, so this week's poll can be found at twit.to slash triple A poll 438. Twit.to slash AAA poll 438. And you can place your vote for your favorite app. Is it Volume Panel Pro? What three words? Laps It Pro. Laps It Pro. Or <laughs> Laps It Pro <laughs> or Autumn <laughs> Uh, oh, I got Autumn spelled yeah. wrong. I'll change that. Uh, it says A-U-M-D. It said that in the um doc de. initially. Um so. Autumn. 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 So, yes, I will uh, I will change that. But there you go. Victor, what did you vote for? I missed it. Laps it. Laps it. Victor lapsed it. That's what's up, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they probably there struck a deal or something. No beforehand. comment. <laughs> okay. None needed. Uh, and we have reached the end of this episode and Ant, it's really great to have you back and to have you here thank you for hopping on tonight i appreciate you having me on and appreciate the network having me here and yeah and yeah it's all good things surreal, coming man. anything you want to talk about uh anything well able to talk about? i can talk about hot you okay know, have y'all subscribed to hot hands on tech yeah go ahead I and have. hit that subscribe button in your podcatcher and just stay tuned for that twit.tv slash hot it's pretty easy to remember pretty easy you want to go and subscribe that's where you go. I have right. a segment there um, coming up soon, and it was pretty fun, and I look forward to having more there. Right on. In addition to some other stuff that we're working on. Other stuff. And that's all you get to know. That's all you get to know. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Ant underscore Pruitt on Twitter. And just here all the time now, so it's great. Yes. Uh, Flo, what's new in your world? I am hunkering down and working behind the scenes. I've got some, I'm working on some investigative journalism, kind yeah. of. Uh, that sounds important. <laughs> like my version of it. My version. Uh, I'm working on a on a project that I will hopefully be able to tell you all about soon. I'm actually going down to LA next week to work on that. So lots of exciting, lots of exciting things happening. My goodness. Oh, but FlorenceION.com in the meantime. That works. Thank you, Flo. Good to see you. And then, Ron, what about you, sir? Yeah, be sure to follow me on Twitter at RonXO and on Instagram at RonXO. And uh, 
uh, just working hard at work on Scorbit, uh, the new pinball connected platform that I've been working on. We're doing some cool stuff. We're ta- we're we're looking into hardware manufacturing now, so it's 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 moving forward slowly, but it's coming along. So uh, sign up for that mailing list. Stay stay tuned with that, and of course, uh, subscribe to my other podcast, Finale Podcast, FinalePodcast.com. We're getting a new episode coming very soon, so stay tuned to that. Sorry, I'm updating my. Hold on. There we go. I'm updating my new Instagram account. I got on this I got on this network. You may have heard of it. It's called Instagram. And welcome. Y- yeah. Join it. Welcome for joining us now. We've all been hanging out. Okay, fine. I'm uh, happy to see you in my feed. Yeah. yeah I, I thought I actually thought it was a fake. Like I texted you, I'm like, are you sure I this did is too. you? <laughs> I had to wait on it, you know. I'm not Think, lying, I had yeah, to wait. No, good. Well, I'm, I appreciate that. I actually do totally appreciate that. Uh, but it's funny, you all had the same comment. <laughs> you all thought it was fake. I realized I, I, I need to have an Instagram for work, and and I'm having fun. I mean, I'm I'm trying to get into the habit of it again. So yeah. I haven't been sharing a whole lot on social media these days. So it's fun to get back into it. So I just posted that. You did. So there. Are that's the third thing on there now. Your account's More blow sugar up. pictures, please. <laughs> All right, More sugar pictures. That should, be, sugar. that should be the easiest thing in the world for me to update. I could true. definitely put yeah. pictures of my dog up there. Uh, Victor, thank you so much for uh, for helping out. Always uh, appreciate it. No problem. Even uh, if you did mess up. Yeah, I guess that means I got to oh, come back strong go, next week, huh? <laughs> oh. Victor, you're awesome. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm going to go uh, back and watch more Cobra Kai and trade <laughs> train more on on my uh, announcer skills <laughs> at the announcer dojo. <laughs> so it's you're, you're and okay. You're, you're, he's really into Cobra Kai. Everyone. I know. Yeah. yeah it's, it's clear. Dojo. <laughs> wow. well, look, season three is out right now. Okay. Uh, it's season three, dojo. Right? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, well, you know what? You, you be you, Victor. That's, that's why you're awesome. So yeah. thanks for uh, helping us out here. Uh, and by the way, I realized I said it was on Instagram. I didn't tell you where I actually was. It's that Jason Howell. Look, Jason Howell was taken, and I didn't want Jason Howell in five numbers. Nope. So that Jason Howell is where you'll find me. Uh, also, thanks to Burke and Jeff for helping out here in the studio this week. Uh, really appreciate you guys and all your work that you do. But that is it for this week's show. This podcast publishes every Tuesday evening. You get it late in the evening because we shoot it late in the evening, and then it gets edited by our awesome Victor and published uh, a couple hours after that. So subscribe. Go to twit.tv slash AAA. There you're going to find everything you need to know, all the subscribe links, uh, links direct to YouTube if that's your if that's your thing, uh, Google Photos, Pocket Cast, Apple uh, Podcasts, everything you need to know is there. You can also leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us emails, AAA at twit.tv. And uh, finally, follow Twit on the socials. Uh, and you can pick whatever you like. Go to Twitter. It's at Twit. Go to Instagram. It's twit.tv. All over the place. We're uh, posting a bunch of cool behind-the-scenes stuff right now and having a lot of fun doing it. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. And I bet there will be goats there. See you then. Oh. Bye, everybody. <laughs> no goats. <laughs>